Hi, everyone. I'm Rob Espero for the Viral Volley Podcast. And with me on screen, or if you're not on screen, the other voice you'll be hearing is one of the most vibrant, outgoing, enthusiastic, charismatic middle blockers. And she comes from Colorado Springs, of all places, and went to Penn State University, is now on the USA Women's National Team, and is playing in Gorgonzola, Italy. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm playing in Novara, Italy for Igor Gorgonzola. It's very okay. nice. Haley Washington, thank you for joining me here today on the Volley, uh, Viral Volley Podcast. What's up? Good to be here. Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, she's got energy. It's late at night in Italy. <laughs> Just came out of practice. Really? <sighs> Just trying to ride the practice wave, you know what I mean? <laughs> and that's how she looks out of practice. For all you listeners, you don't get the benefit of seeing all the glory that is Haley Washington. Ooh, ooh, we're not gonna talk about it. It's fine. We're just gonna we're just gonna keep going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, let's start by asking you the most simple of questions. But how did you get into playing volleyball? Oh, I really like this question. It's an easy one, but I really like it because it's a great backstory. I got into volleyball because my dad wouldn't let me play football. <laughs> I grew up as such a tomboy, and I wanted to play football so bad. Like, y'all don't even know. I was about to be the next OBJ, just straight hands. Like, but <laughs> my dad pointed out that when I was 12 years old, I was already like 6'3 and only weighed like 70 pounds. Probably would have been snapped in half. So I was banned from playing football, unfortunately. And my friend was going to the volleyball tryout, and we just, just I just decided I'd tag along. I figured, okay, fine, whatever. I had no idea what volleyball was. I honestly thought there was only beach. I had no idea that you could play the game inside. And so I went to practice or the tryout and was goofy and lanky and uncoordinated as most 12 year olds are, but I had a great time and I picked up the footwork for attacking really quickly. I could serve the ball over the net pretty efficiently. And honestly, I just fell in love with the game right there. It was super fun. Wow. Now, did you ever imagine like from just having it as a secondary choice type of sport to having the success nationally that you did at a perennial powerhouse like Penn State? Dude, yeah, no way. When I was, because it just never even crossed my mind that I could, I mean, at some point it did, that I could go to school for it. But when I first started playing, I was just like, this is just something to do after school. This is what you do. You do stuff after school because you got nothing else to do. And so I just went for it and it was, it was awesome and I fell in love with it. And then eventually I decided that's what I wanted to go to college for. So that was a big decision. But yeah, the fact that volleyball has taken me where it has taken me. So like, you were 12 or 13 when you just even entertained the thought of playing volleyball? Yeah, so I was, uh, I was like 12 years old, uh, just got started, because like when I was a kid growing up, we just played outside, like I was, I grew up in a really small mountain town, so like we didn't really do a lot of work, like we had Little League, I'd play like Little League baseball, I don't want to brag, I was a pretty nice pitcher, no big deal. Um, <laughs> big unit, so like, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but the idea of volleyball never really came into my life until, yeah, middle school, 12, 12, 12 years old. Wow. Now, so some of your accomplishments, you became a national champion at Penn State. No big whoop under Russ Rose. You made the USA Volleyball Collegiate All-Star Team that you got to tour a little bit here on the West Coast, which is where I met you. Three-time <laughs> ABCA All-American First Team, uh, 2015 through 17. I mean, what was it like knowing that you had these things popping in your path on your journey to bring you to where you're at now? Um, as far as the accolades go, they're awesome and I'm always honored and humbled to be able to represent myself and Penn State in that high esteem but that national championship game I was I was a part of a really strong unit so it was just awesome to be a part of something bigger than myself and something as strong and passionate as that Penn State remind team. Remind me of some of your teammates if you don't mind me asking I, I was trying to find the roster for that year. Oh yeah uh, Micah was we had Micah Hancock we had Ali Franny we had Ayanna Whitney, Nia Grant was out there, Dom Gonzalez tearing it up at the bro. It was a, it was a good, steady uh, squad. Everybody doing their job at a high level, Megan Courtney. We had a good team. We had a really strong squad. And I was- you know what's crazy? Five of those girls were on the USA Collegiate All-Star team because that's how I met all of them. So I'm yeah, glad you, it's yeah. a good segue into uh, popping their, your, your friends and former teammates' names in there. <laughs> Heck yeah, name dropping. It's, it's called networking. You just got to name drop every once in a while. You know how it goes. You know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was, it's always great to just play this game at a high level, compete at a high level, and then the accolades will, might come, they might not come, you never know. And it's right. just honestly competing as hard and as best as you can is all that matters. Yeah. Now that success continued after graduating from Penn State. Uh, 
winning gold for the USA in the Pan American Cup in 2018, winning gold again in the highly prestigious FIVB Volleyball Nations League. I wanted to say World League on the men's side, but it's new school now. It's VNL yeah. uh, 2019, and you even got the VNL Best Blocker Award. What were the keys to your success? I think you kind of said it in your last answer, but yeah, that's that's quite a docket of awards for you on the international level at that. Yeah. Uh, again, I think, yeah, I kind of said it in my last answer, I was surrounded by a lot of great players. And when you're fortunate enough to be on a team with strong players, you yourself become a better player. And honestly, that's like a big thing that I believe in is you should make those around you better. And I think that that team made me better and I did my part to make that team better. And so I was just really blessed and super fortunate to be able to play with those girls. And they brought out the best in me and they held me to a high level of, high level of play and to a high standard. We held each other accountable. And I actually remember when we won gold in the Dominican, we were down 0-2 in the gold medal match. And I remember we were going around for that third set and I was so pumped because I just remember looking at my teammates and there was this fire in their eyes and it wasn't like a, oh no, we're down 0-2. It was like a, let's go. And like just I am the tiger. Fire. We went Rocky on them. Yeah, man. Like straight Rocky Balboa in that. It was awesome. And just... When you play with people that have a passion and a fire for the game like you, it just, it, it makes you want to play at your best level, you know? So mm -hmm. it was, it was awesome. I'm very lucky by the people I get to play with. with well, you. as an outside observer or an outsider, we'll say, I mean, kind of, I, I just was on the mic. So I got to see you from an outside perspective and kind of stalk you guys during your trainings and, you know, get the inside <laughs> there. But it seems that the USA women's national team head coach, Karch Kirai, has been watching you pretty closely since your Penn State days and you seem to represent like a new generation of talent and athletes on the team. What does it mean that, that someone as great as the GOAT, Karch Karai, has the confidence in you and your abilities to contribute to the USA uh, Volleyball National Team? Yeah, honestly, it, this is gonna be a really lame answer, but it's awesome. It's really awesome <laughs> that, he, uh, that he trusts me with that and that he's willing to give me the opportunity and my favorite thing about working with Karch is uh, he's a big, he's big on learning. And I really, really admire that because when you come into the USA gym, the level is so high and you're this young, dumb college player. And so you don't really know the international game. And so the fact that he's patient with you and he allows you to be a learner, to make those mistakes, to get comfortable being uncomfortable, that's awesome. So I'm just super grateful for the opportunity because Honestly, there are, we have so much talent in the States. That was very Italian. Did you see that? We have so I'm much Italian, talent. I know. <laughs> we have so much talent in the States that it's just, we have, we have a lot of depth. And so being able to be there and to work hard and to learn and grow in that environment, I'm just super grateful for. So. Well, with that depth, you were able to be one of the lone, actually the only USA athlete who played in all three of the uh, Tokyo Olympic qualifier matches in Bossier City or Shreveport, Louisiana, uh, last year. Uh, you guys took on Kazakhstan, Argentina, and a very feisty Bulgaria team. I mean, what did it mean for you that, that he gave you the ability to start in all those three matches, which resulted in you the, helping qualify the USA for the, well, the now 2021 Tokyo Olympics? Yeah. Honestly, it meant the world to me because my whole outlook on going to the Olympics is, isn't about making the roster. It's about, I want to prepare the U S team to be as best as they can be to compete for gold. And so the fact that I had the opportunity to be on the court to get them to the Olympics to qualify for gold meant the world to me because mm -hmm. yes, it would be amazing to go to Tokyo. Don't get me wrong. That would, and I uh, going to the Olympics is a goal of mine, but at the end of the day, I want USA to win gold more than I want anything. And so right. if that means I just need to work hard at the Olympic qualifier and do everything that I can to put the team in that position, and maybe I don't go to the Olympics, that's okay. Because I did my job. And yeah. so being able to be on the court and like help the team beat a very feisty Bulgaria, what a game. Oh yeah. my God, it was <laughs> so competitive. Well, you and Nasia Dimitrova were going at it, you know, Ooh. middle for middle. Uh, yeah, I, she stands like right around six four, six five, and she's very uh, long. So, uh, mm -hmm. but we needed your athleticism, and it came through in the clutch. <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was a very competitive game. It was awesome, and just again having the opportunity to be out there and to compete in the USA jersey in America—that was amazing. Yeah. Playing in Louisiana in a USA jersey like that meant the world to me. So. It was a really cool opportunity and I'm super grateful for it. It's going to be near and dear to my heart for a while. Well, I'm going to hate to put you on the spot for this next question because you said it's not about 
uh, you making a team, but USA winning gold. But how are you approaching making that Tokyo roster? Because I know that's not set yet. Yeah. Um, right now, my mentality is to be the best that I can possibly be, compete as best as I can, and do what I need to do to make the USA team better. So if I go in and maybe I'm not in like the starting lineup that's training, but I'm on the other side, I'm going to do everything that I can to kick that starting side's butt. Because China's not going to show them mercy. Serbia is not going to show them mercy. No team is going to go against USA and be like, oh, we can take this one off. Like we are very blessed that we always get 100% of what people have, regardless of the round, regardless of its pool play or the gold medal match. People are always giving 100%. Well, they're always it's looking to knock you off. They're knocking the number one slash two seed off. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I want to I wanna prepare us. I want to help prepare us for that. And whether that's being loud and obnoxious on the sidelines or being the best middle blocker that I can be or being up in transition, I just want to be the best that I can be to make USA the best that it can be in whatever role I'm given. Yeah. Because to have a role is an incredible opportunity. And so that's kind of my mentality right now. It sounds, maybe it sounds a little blase, a little bit like, nah, I don't care. I really do care. Like I, I want USA to be the best that it can be and the fact that i'm in the gym and can contribute to that means the world to me uh, that's incredible now it's such a great day uh. <laughs> <laughs> well let's move to more current event times or actually more the last six seven months but you know where were you when the news of the pandemic broke out were you abroad yeah so i was still in italy and actually i remember the day uh italy got its first uh, coronavirus case. We had just come back from playing Kazan from Russia. Mm -hmm. So we were in the airport, we were getting onto the bus and our libero was like, whoa, the first case is in Lombardia, which is the region that like I was playing and I was in the Lombardia region. So we had one case. And so then I woke up the next morning and like there was a message in the group chat and it was like, there's 30 cases now. And then two oh. days later, it was like, there's 275 cases and it blew up. Yeah. And then our game got canceled. And then the next game got canceled. And then all of a sudden we were like in this just limbo of not knowing if season's going to go on, if season's mm -hmm. not going to go on, what are we training for? We're not allowed to have practice. Like everything just kind of came to a grinding halt. And a lot of the American players started to like chat, like, should we stay here? Are we going to get locked wow. out? Like, are they going to allow international travel? Like it was, it was really intense. And like making the decision to event inevitably come home when season was canceled was a tough one. But how, how quickly did, were you, or did you go home or did they send you home? Cause I know it's like um, some of the Polish players uh, or American players playing in Poland. They actually had some issues. They're like, go home, but we can't go home. But was it a similar situation for you? No. So I, we were really fortunate in Italy in that we, there was, there were no hiccups getting out other than a long travel day, but there were no hiccups getting out. We pretty much just had to find a flight, get it booked. And then we were good to go. And I was super fortunate because my club understood as well. I told my agent and I told my club manager, I was like, Hey, I'm feeling a little uncomfortable with this coronavirus case. Like I don't mm -hmm. want to get stuck locked out of the United States. I think, I, I think I need to go home. Like that's, that's what's best for like me and frankly, my family, like I need to be near them during this. Yeah. And so my club was very understanding. They were like, we totally get it. We absolutely understand. We'll help you find your ticket. We'll help you get packed up. And then I was, I was able to go very freely. I'm super grateful for all that Busto did. They were awesome. So shout out them. Oh gosh. I can imagine the, the chaos having to go through internationally. And I'm <laughs> thank yeah, that God travel that everyone day. made it back. <laughs> yeah. That was, a, that was a tough travel day. Cause only a couple airports were allowing you to fly out of Europe and only a couple airports were allowing you to fly into America. Yeah. So I had to go, Milan to Munich, Munich to Frankfurt, Frankfurt to DC, DC to Arizona. Like it was, it was a long travel day. I'll tell you what. <laughs> well, thank goodness you made it back. Uh, okay. But hey, my next question for you though, is like, obviously things like dominoes just fell and, you know, with the cancellation of the, the European teams leagues, as well as collegiate championships, both on the beach and indoor side then beach pro leagues, and then obviously the Olympics, uh, what was your reaction to the postponement of the Olympics? That one was tough because on the one hand, I knew it was inevitable. Things were getting shut down. It wasn't safe. Yeah. Like, it was a good call on their part just because it, was, it wouldn't be safe to do the Olympics at that time. So I understood. I totally got it. But then on the other hand, I was incredibly disappointed. And not just for myself, but for all the other athletes that 
who for four years have been putting in the work to do what they needed to do to qualify and to do what they needed to do to compete there. So my heart broke for them as much as it Mm -hmm. broke for me, because I know a lot of people have sacrificed so much and now they have to sacrifice even more taking another year training through quarantine, finding ways to stay in shape, to stay Mm -hmm. in the fight, as we like to say. Yeah. Like that's hard. So my heart kind of broke for them. And then there was also this little teeny tiny part of me that had like a little fire under her butt. I was like, just one more year to put in that work. Like I got yeah. excited. I get an extra year to work on. Like I was, I was a little hyped. I'm not gonna lie. I'm sorry. It yeah. sounds lame. It's a little cliche, but an extra year to get prepped and to do what I need to do to be even better than I was a year before. Like that was exciting. I'm sorry. It was a little part of me. But like, you know what though? But I've found that in other people I've spoken to during the pandemic that they found it as a recharge time or a healing time. Yeah. If not physically from a, a family or emotional relational standpoint, they just were recharged to go back and play. Exactly. So, and with your body being a hundred percent, like imagine what you could do, right? Exactly. Yeah, it was good. I've never had three months off before. That was crazy. <laughs> never had three months without volleyball. I, just, I didn't know what to do with myself. <laughs> So what are, what are you doing then to, I guess, stay in the fight, so to speak, uh, especially with, I mean, you had limited access to even just seeing any kind of, of reps on a court. Uh, what have you been doing to, to keep your skills intact? Uh, now I get to train. So the, inter- the Italian league has started back up, which has been really nice. I'm super fortunate for that. We're doing closed doors, so no fans are allowed in, but we at least get to compete, which is good. So right. for the last month or so, yeah, about a month or so, I've been able to play six on six and get back into volleyball shape and figure out how to block again, which I just has been awful. <laughs> it's, it's been good. It's been good. Uh, and then during quarantine, I was super blessed that my old club let me come in and train a little bit. So I got to at least serve a little bit, do block moves along the net a little bit. Like I got to get in a little bit of work. I played some beach. I don't want to brag, but like, I wasn't terrible. I wasn't good. I'm not competitive, but like I played and like I got the ball over the net. So that's pretty good. Well, you played as a defender. No. <laughs> Please. My block is actually pretty nice on the beach though. You better watch out. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Please don't make me play beach ever. Um, and then I was actually super lucky. The U.S. team was doing a little bit of like small group work. So I got to go out and then with some COVID restrictions, we got to do a little bit of small group work with the national team. So I got to do some lifting out there got to do like block moves and work with some of the setters and we had to wear masks every once in a while. We played a lot of two on two, but it was still good to just touch the ball to like get reps just to touch, to keep that kind of game alive. So, so that was here at ASC in Anaheim for a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you made it out to California. I thought you were in Colorado spring or sorry, home. I don't want to, <laughs> may have just yeah. revealed the home for you, but. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> um, yeah, I was in Colorado Springs for about two, three months. And then there just came a point where I, I was chomping at the bit. I was like, I got, I got it. And then, so we had initiated some small group training during like a preliminary phase, I guess, to feel out how we could do it with the USA team. And then they started up phase two as they had figured things out and they had reached out to me and were like, Hey, we're doing this. We would love to have you out here. And I, I jumped at the opportunity. I was just super excited to get out there and be able to be in the gym for a little bit. And I got a pretty decent amount of time out there. I was super fortunate for that. So it was really good. It was great. That's uh, I mean, it, it's great to hear that, that the players were back in the gym. I know that there were some Insta posts of everyone wearing masks and latex gloves. I'm like, this is, yeah. seems awkward. <laughs> it, was, it was nuts. We had our, our setters had to wear latex gloves sometimes. We had to play with masks on sometimes, constantly sanitizing, keeping six feet. Yeah. Our athletic training staff put in a lot of work making sure that we were COVID compliant. So Yeah. Now, um, from an international career standpoint, it seems you found a professional home in the Italian leagues. This is your four teams in Italy. Is it, uh, I'm going to see, I may butcher some of the names. Olympia, Teodoro, Ravenna, Banca, Valsabina, Millennium, Brescia. Brescia, yeah. Unet, E-Work, Busso, Arcesio, and you're currently on Igor Gorgonzola, Novara. Yes, but, yep. Now, why do you have such an endearment for the Italian leagues? Um, honestly, that's just kind of how my career has gone. I knew when I graduated, the international circuit would have to be a building block type deal. I wasn't going to come out on top just because it's really tough for that to happen sometimes as middles. Uh, so you have to work your way up. So I was super fortunate that I found a job in Italy in the A2 league at Olympia Teodoro Ravenna. Uh, it was a great first initiation to playing international volleyball. Mm-hmm. 
a lot of glitz and glam, not, not as much glitz and glam as you think when you're playing professionally. It's a very humble sport at that, at, at any international level. It's very humble. You come in, you play volleyball, you do your job, you go home. And it was, it was a great first opportunity. And then because of that, I got to, uh, Brescia saw me when we played against them and mm-hmm. had a really good game against Brescia. And they were like, we want, to pl- we want her to play with us next year when we go to A1. So I went up, I took a little step up there going into A1. Right. Had a pretty good season. And so Busto saw me and they were like, we want her to play for us. I was like, great, awesome. Another step in the right direction. Busto was at the top of the league. And then I had a pretty good season with Busto. Not too bad, quote, circumstances aside. Yeah. Uh, Novara was another great step. So it's just been this kind of process of building up and letting my career build step by step, which is really funny because if you were to ask senior year Haley how long she wanted to play volleyball for, my game plan was, oh, I'll play for like two, three years and then I'll do something else. Like, what a dummy. <laughs> Took two, three years for me to establish myself. So it's just been a process all about growth. And I like Italy. It's well, a comfortable way of life. I like the food. I like the language. It's good over here. Wow. So that's a phenomenal experience of, of you just seeing the ladder to success as you elevate to the different levels and the quality of teams. I'm exactly. not saying there's a bad team in Italy, but obviously there, there, there are teams that are winning because the grind is hard. There's so much talent internationally playing in those leagues. Yeah. And it says a lot that you would move up in such a system like that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let, let's look at your, your current team here. Novara has a lineup that features quite an international roster. I was like, you got to be kidding me. As Christina Kinakella from the Italian national team, Sara Bonifacio, also a middle, two middles from the Italian national team, Malvina Smartsek, the opposite from Poland. I believe she's like six, like 50, six foot 50, because she's humongous. Yeah. She's tall. <laughs> Micah? Yeah. I, you recognize that name from the old Penn State days? And of course, mm-hmm. you. I mean, that is a loaded lineup. How does your team even lose? <sighs> we lose. Don't worry. We, we have our weaknesses as much as we have our strengths. Every team does. Um, but it's good. And actually, Micah and I were just talking about this at practice today. Things are starting to click. Like, I've only been out here for a month, and it takes a while for teams to get established and for you to find rhythm with your setters and your defense and block. And we've been – training a lot so we've been tired so you push through those factors of being like tired and muscles hurting and we took five months off so that's also a factor so it's been a process but yeah. the rhythm's coming along and we're figuring out how to trust each other and how to open things up and to play elite and I think if we can continue to grow in the way that we're growing with this lineup and with the talent that we have on this team we can be a very strong team so I'm really excited. Well, let me ask you this. You've been talking a lot about practice. I was trying to figure out when the league play actually started or if there are any uh, European tournaments coming up. When when do you start with all the competition? Yeah, so our championship, our uh, regular season, I guess you would call it, started last uh, Friday, I want to say. It's very recent. Yeah, very recent. We had our first like regular season game on the 20th and Novara had a bye week. So like every team gets a bye week during uh, the season. So we had our bye week, so we didn't play. Mike and I went with our Polish opposite to Sardinia, spent a couple days on the beach. <laughs> I noticed that on your social feed, you know. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, wait, wait, I thought play started. <laughs> yeah, season started for them, but we don't start until this week. So we went to Sardinia. It was beautiful. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we have our first game in two days against Bergamo. I'm really excited. They're a very competitive team. It's going to be a really good game. Looking forward to playing. Uh, but yeah, regular season has officially started rolling. We also had a tournament a little bit earlier, Supercoppa. Mm-hmm. It's like the Italian Super Cup, and uh, it's fun, competitive, good way to like kind of start to feel the rhythm of playing as a team. Sorry if it's loud. Sorry if you can hear that. All right, no worries, no worries. We're all about grassroots appeal here, so we we love the right. the, the natural environment that you're in. So if you're making coffee or something, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I got my water bottle at least. That's not... <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I've got to ask you because, you know, as an American who tries to track our Americans playing in the, abroad, it's tough to find streams and feeds. And, they, you know, I usually end up at some Russian gambling site that plants some kind of <laughs> malware on my computer. But, like, what is the best way to watch you play? Yeah, I think for the Italian league, at least, the best place to go is legovolleyfeminile.com. That's, like, the best place to find it. 
Uh, actually, it might be .it now that I think about it. But if you just Google Lego Volley Femminile, it'll pop up and you can watch all the streams there. You might need to pay for the streaming service because that's like how they make their money and how they can pay for the equipment and stuff. But that's the best place to watch. They were also doing YouTube streaming for a little bit. I'm not sure how that went. But yeah, internationally, it can be a little tough to find the game sometimes to be able to watch all the time, which can be a little frustrating for friends and family. But every once in a while, you might get lucky and find a stream and get to watch. So it's good. <laughs> the Hales Yeah feed is coming out, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll start Hales, by... For all you listeners, it's Hales Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to follow. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so what's the outlook for your team this year? Because, uh, you know, we talked about the talent, but I mean, looks like the potential is definitely there. Yeah, uh, I think it's going to be a really competitive team. It's going to be a really competitive year. I have high hopes of finishing at least second in the league. There's also, sorry, again, it's loud outside. Uh, we have Corneliano, Imoco Corneliano. They are honestly one of the best club teams in the world. So they're going to be really competitive and tough to play against. But I hope that we can at least be competitive contenders with them mm -hmm. and do our best to put up a good fight because they are very strong. But I think we have potential to be very strong too. So. Aren't there other Americans on that team as well? I was trying to remember yes, who. Kim Hill plays there, and who's there's another person? there. Uh, Kim Hill, she Kim plays Hill. there. Okay. And there's another person who's doing really, really well, and I feel really, really bad that I can't remember her name, but I'm really bad at that. So American player? Yeah, she's American. I think she played at Texas. Texas? Maybe. Is it I don't know. Please. I'm really not the person to talk about Yaka Bobu? No, no. Chiaka's in Turkey. Oh, that, yeah. I've been seeing a lot of her feed stuff. Like, wait, I thought she's... In... <laughs> yeah, really, I, I'm really not the person okay. to know that I'm terrible with this. I'm really we'll not. We'll Google that. Hale's guy okay. is pretty awesome and everything, except for remembering some people's names. We'll go with that. All the, actually, no, I'm really good at remembering names. If you introduce yourself to me, I'm just really bad at remembering, like, who plays where and who <laughs> are. I just, mm, I have my strengths. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's a good spot to break uh, before our next segment. Uh, if you're just joining us, you're listening at, or watching uh, Haley Washington of the USA Women's National Team and 2021 Tokyo Olympic hopeful and Penn State super stud. So we'll be right back in just a moment. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Viral Volley Podcast. Still on screen with me. Thank goodness she didn't just like ghost me or hang up on me is Haley Washington of the USA Women's National Team. And she's playing currently in Navarra. I said it incorrectly because I don't know the emphasis. Oh, of you the nailed it. You nailed it. <laughs> in Italy. And, uh, you know, she's, she's taking the time to join me nine hours ahead here. It's a Friday night. Uh, I don't know if that's a social statement on where you're at, but we are in a COVID. So you're pretty much locked down anyway. So <laughs> got practice tomorrow. There are no Friday nights when you're playing professionally. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> Let's go on to the off-court side of Miss at Hales, yeah, or Haley Washington. We're going to keep dropping your handle so people start following Love you. That. <laughs> it seems that you have a keen interest in philosophy. How did that come mm -hmm. about? Yeah, uh, actually my interest in philosophy started in a very informal sense just with my mom. Like my mom and I used to just have really long philosophic life talks every time we would drive to practice when I played club. So my club commute was about two hours every time we would drive to club practice. So it's two hours there, two hours back. And my mom and I would just get to- In Arizona or something? <laughs> yeah. Playing in Colorado Springs, it was a long drive those first couple of years. And so <laughs> my mom and I would just talk about life. We would talk wow. about what are people trying to achieve, good versus evil, love, like deep conversations that my wow. mom was having. 15 year old daughter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so when I went to college, I originally was uh, majoring in communications, mm -hmm. but I didn't love that. Like they made communicating and like talking a science. Like I was like, it's really not that hard. You just talk like you just, you just do it. So I figured if I'm going to school for free, I might as well do something I'm really interested in. So I went with philosophy and I'm so glad I did. It was, it was an awesome experience and I absolutely loved it. Do you have a go-to philosopher? Just one. Yeah. I'm going to make it hard. I'm sure it's probably like... I know. I know. Uh, presently, I'm studying Fanon, Franz Fanon, mm -hmm. because of, honestly, the political turmoil in our country. He writes these really great books. He's got two really great books, Wretched of the Earth and Black Skin, White Masks. And they're both kind of on the psychoanalysis of Black consciousness within a 
um, what's it called? Within a conqueror, conquest, oppressor, oppressive society. It's really interesting, mm -hmm. actually. So Franz Fanon's kind of my go-to lately. I also really like Hegel and Socrates. I'm sorry, you can't just give me one. Yeah, I okay, just... I, I had a feeling you'd bounce off, but I, I'm surprised you didn't like throw down some Aristotle though. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Aristotle and his Neomachian <laughs> ethics is incredible. And I love what he has to say about happiness, but it's just such a cliche. Like, come on, if you're gonna read anything, you should definitely read Plato because his interpretation of what Socrates would say was amazing. <laughs> Plato's Republic, everybody needs to read it. <laughs> well, the reason I dropped the Aristotle is because, you know, the one, the, the quote that sticks out in mind is, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence mm. is not an act, but a habit. So I'm like, as an athlete, that's got to be a go-to right there. <laughs> I mean, there's so many good quotes <laughs> for an athlete. Like, I mean, you can't just pick one. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I, you know, just like, I, I know she's going to like drop some like mega philosopher. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of outside my scope of understanding, but I'll trust you on that one. <laughs> hey, I'm humble. I, I'm real. I know where I'm at. <laughs> hey, know thyself. That's philosophy right there. Know thyself. <laughs> the steps of Delphi. So you being one of the most, uh, I, you know, for, especially in viral times, it's probably not good to use an infectious personality, but you're very outgoing and you're very charismatic. And you had an Instagram takeover over on the USA Volleyball account and Gosh, you have such a great natural ability to connect with people. I mean, you're getting all these comments, you're responding, you're, you're speaking quickly, but you're like hitting everyone up. I mean, uh, what, what fires you up in your personality to, to be the way that you are? Uh, I, I don't really know if I have a good answer for that. It's just that I, I just love it. Like, I loved doing that Instagram live. It was so fun. And honestly, I need to start doing it more on just like my regular Instagram, just like maybe every Wednesday or something doing an Instagram live and answering questions. Because I really just I love the connection. I love hearing people that are interested in volleyball, people that are interested in my life, people that are interested in bettering their lives. Like I just, I love people like I'm a people person, yeah. I get my, like I get recharged when I get the opportunity to talk to and engage with people. So I don't know. It's just there's a light in everybody, you know? And like, if you can channel and access that light, it's awesome. Yeah, well, it'd be a great opportunity, especially in our previous conversation on the volleyballmag.com about uh, the Black Lives Matter and the, the yeah. current issues, you know, just to be able to approach someone, because like I said, you're very approachable and, you know, it's a safe space. And I know that, that you won't judge people for just asking an honest question, so. Yeah, um, not out loud. I'm not gonna judge you out loud. I yeah. might think you're just kidding. <laughs> behind the scenes and you'll slam them on social media, but that's it. <laughs> yeah, I might tweet something like someone asked the dumbest question today. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> now, um, you've got to be one of the most entertaining personalities on the USA team. I mean, who's ever worn the USA uniform from DJ Hills, yeah, at the Collegiate All Stars, because I did get my music from you. And it's funny, I'm like, Karch, what kind of music do you want playing? Talk to this girl here, Haley Washington. She's, she'll, she'll dial you in. I'm like, she, here, here's her here's her phone number text her she'll get you the playlist to play during the matches like what <laughs> and then i met you and that's when i realized you are the dj you're the music aficionado has this always been the Haley dub that's been on all the teams the the music aficionado uh i wouldn't say i'm like a super music aficionado i just know it like like i know how to please a crowd like i know what music you're to cool. play like you're hip. you can say it i won't judge <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But actually, we have an even better DJ. Jordan Poulter would play music when we were traveling for VNL and stuff. And she's a great DJ. She knows how to like change it up. Like some days she'd play like Justin Bieber and Rihanna. And then the next day it'd be like 80s classics. Like she's really good at keeping you get. She's a good DJ. Jordan Poulter's a good DJ. She's got good we're gonna music. come up with a DJ stage name for her too. I know. <laughs> DJ JP. Something stupid like that. Well, hey, you actually alluded to it, and this is a special segment I wanted to end on here because, I mean, on your social media feed, particularly Twitter, you've been on fire. So I thought I'd have you read your tweets and maybe give a little insight as to why you tweeted those out. So let's uh, go to our Whatcha Tweetin' segment, which nice. is debuting here with at Hales Yeah or Haley Washington of the USA Women's National Team. So let me share my screen really quick here. Hold on just a moment. Hope this isn't a crash and burn. We're gonna Amen. go to go. your screen one and go here. All right, that's tweet number one. How about you give that a read and explain it to us? <laughs> Wait, okay. When I was seven years old, 
Pitbull was my favorite recording artist. I peaked way too early. <laughs> oh, I peaked way too early, y'all. Oh my God, I'm funny. I'm not funny, I'm sorry. I really should have gassed myself up. No, I don't even know where this one came from. I think I was just like, I had been thinking of a song in my head over and over again and I couldn't figure out who sang it. So I Googled it and I looked up that Pitbull had been the one singing it. And I remember very distinctly, second grade, someone asked me, like it was like one of those fill in the blank things, like what's your favorite food, your favorite color? And the question was, what, yeah, exactly. Someone was like, who's your favorite musical artist? And I wrote Pitbull at like seven years old. And I mean, I think that's pretty fire. If a second grader wrote that right now, I'd be like, wow, this kid is, <laughs> I peaked too early. <laughs> awesome. All right, tweet number two. Okay, here we go. Oh my You're God. You're gonna read. <laughs> You want me to read this? Am I reading this out loud? Oh yeah, for sure. They got to hear okay. it in all the glory that is Haley Washington. Okay. All right. In my, can I tell a story first? We were on our way to our hotel in Sardinia and we were listening to a Lady Gaga song that featured Ariana Grande. And so I was thinking about Ariana Grande. This was just like a random thought. She was, I was listening to her music. All right. Twitter then said, quote, <laughs> Ariana Grande is so freaking cute. A little short for me though. Quick pause. Quick Google search, LOL, my boyfriend's got an inch on her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the reason that I, <laughs> so my, my current boyfriend is 5'4", and Ariana Grande is 5'3". So it's just funny that I said, a little short for me though, and my boyfriend is fairly taller than her. Oh let's my God. A, let's not give your boyfriend's handle out here on this one, okay? I wanna, pre I wanna preserve his integrity. <laughs> Good idea, could call on that, could call on that one. <laughs> All right, tweet number three. Oh no. <laughs> Sir, if your fanny pack is big enough to cover your entire Speedo, your Speedo is too small. <laughs> I mean, I was, I was at a lake day and I was just trying to enjoy the sun and I had to look at a gentleman with a Speedo far too small being covered by his fanny pack. It was awful. I just, I just, <laughs> just for the record, another name for that I learned in Australia was, is Budgie Smuggler, which is a small bird. Just in case you're wondering. <laughs> so Speedos, like, also known as budgie smugglers. Budgie smuggler, banana hammock. That's there another one. That's the <laughs> American term. Nice. <laughs> All right, here we go. Next tweet. Oh God. Oh, <laughs> worst mistake you can make when playing pro overseas: crave Chipotle. That's facts. That is the worst. I was lying on my couch one day, just like, you know what I really want a chicken bowl from Chipotle and the desire to have something like to want something and just not being able to get it. Like there's nowhere I could go to get Chipotle. And so this is a shout out to Chipotle. Please build a Chipotle restaurant in Milan. Thank oh, you. I, th I thought you were looking more long-term like, hmm, maybe if I start playing beach or get a sponsorship <laughs> for USA Volleyball, oh, Chipotle. <laughs> yes, that's not a bad idea. You're right, I should, I should expand my horizons a little more. <laughs> All right, here we go, one more. Okay. <laughs> uh, excited for my demise. <laughs> Title of my mixtape. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I honestly, I couldn't even tell you where this one came from. I think I was just sitting in the locker room one day with Micah and I was talking about how tired I am. And I was like, man, I'm just so excited for my demise. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, cool, cool title. So when I drop my mixtape, that'll be the album name. <laughs> <laughs> so good. All right. This is my favorite in the last month. Oh my gosh. There will come a time where I can co confidently parallel park my car anytime, any place. Today, however, is not that day. <laughs> The amount of times it takes me to parallel park a car, I'm so, and that's the only type of parking we have out here is like street parking. You have to parallel park. And I'm so <laughs> bad at it. Oh my gosh. All right, here we go. Oh my God. This is the, I mean, the finale right here. This is it. It's, it's hard being this funny, but someone's got to do it. I put, that's just like, like, put that on my gravestone. That's like me. It's just, it's really hard being this funny. I can't help it, but. Someone's got to take the sacrifice. <laughs> if you're searching for a good time, and if Haley Washington is anywhere within walking distance, just go find her. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, thanks for playing that game. What you tweeting? Debuting on the Viral Volley podcast. 
Uh, I like it. It's good. You know, you know I, I, I enjoyed that segment, but I know with given the time and the history, I always have been closing out with this particular question to all my guests, just because we're at such a unique time in history. And yeah. um, what encouragement or advice would you have for those who aren't having such a great time during this time in history because of lockdowns, of life not going as planned, what would you say to them? That's a really good question. I would say, and this is gonna sound super cliche and lame, but I would say this too shall pass. Nothing horrible ever lasts for as long as it feels like it's gonna last. And so the quarantine, the heartbreaking, exhausting fight that we're fighting with the Black Lives Matter movement, all the other stuff that you might be facing in life, it feels like an endless, just deluge of garbage. But it's not gonna last. The sun's gonna come out. And life overall is good, man. There's music, there's sunshine. You can go outside and smell the fresh air. Like, there are good things in life. You just gotta remember that. Sometimes, just gotta wait for the storm to pass. Oh, or go good. dance in the rain. You know, you can just go yeah. dance in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> nothing but good words from Haley Washington. Hey Haley, I cannot even begin to thank you enough for taking the time, not only for volleyballmag.com, but for the Viral Volley podcast. Because I've always enjoyed speaking with you when you've been in Anaheim or when I've seen you at VNLs or other competitions here in the U.S. I never get to go abroad, but get to watch you on streams and feeds, which is just as, almost as cool. But uh, watch your career blossom from that, that collegiate national champion all the way through the USA national team and now a professional and hopefully an Olympian in the near future. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It was so fun. I told you I love chatting. Just love getting to share stories, swap ideas. So this was great. Well, I'll be tapping in on that connection later on. So ladies and gentlemen, that's Haley Washington. You can follow her on, I only know her Instagram handle off the top of my head. It's at Hills. Yeah. But is that your Twitter handle as well? That's Twitter. My Instagram handle is at Hailstorm. I know. Oh, wow. I know. I was a kid. I just, you make dumb handles when you're a kid. So at Hailstorm. Is Instagram. the X-Men or something? I, I don't know. Is that what you're? <laughs> I'm basically Halle Berry. I'm basically Halle Berry. No, no, no. Way better. I mean. <laughs> well, let's not go crazy. You've seen <laughs> Halle Berry. I mean. Old and busted, new hotness. You are the new hotness. <laughs> I stole that from Will Smith, Men in Black. <laughs> Love, love that.